Hello everyone, so this is a quick video that I wanted to make as an add-on to another, or actually to two other videos. One thing that I mentioned in the past was you should try at all points in time to make it as easy as possible for the prospective client to hire you. Whenever you're applying for jobs, you don't want to make it hard on them. You don't want to say, hey, is it possible if I do this, but I do that at some other time? Or is it possible if you pay me in this weird random way? Or is it possible? Da, 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 da. No, what you want to send them is, is ideally you can just say, I can do the job for this much and in this timeline, ready to go whenever you are. You don't complicate their life at all. You make their life easier and you're showing it to them already right off the bat. Oh, I can do this. I'm very quick and efficient and you won't get all sort of sob stories or weird things from me. So you should always try to keep things as quick as possible. Let's say you want to minimize the number of emails going back and forth with a client because you want to be able to reply right away. Sometimes it's not 100% possible, like if they don't send you the file to be translated or if they left something unclear, and sometimes you, so sometimes you have to ask questions. So even if you have to ask questions, ask them all up front so you can get it done with, so you can minimize the number of emails. Another thing that I mentioned was that you want to make it possible for the client to get in touch with you at any point in time. You want to leave all your information out there in terms of getting in touch with you by phone, by email, by Skype, by FaceTime, by whatever it is, just so they can feel free to contact you. Chances are they won't use all these, but at least it shows that you're open and that you're available should they ever need it. So I just wanted to specify on these two points a bit because they can seem a bit contradictory and also because sometimes it's actually very good to keep talking to the client, to keep emailing the client, and even better to keep talking on the phone with the client. And so I just wanted to clarify this point a little bit. First of all, the first point I made does not change. You should always make things as efficient as possible with the client. If they need something, then you reply right away. You say, I can do this, I can do it in this amount of time, and I can do it for this price, boom. And keep things short. Don't tell your life story. If, if they need a cover letter, you can do your standard cover letter that I'm sure you've already written out various versions of because you obviously follow my advice, especially what I said in the course. But otherwise, you keep things very short with the client and so things can run very smoothly and efficiently. However, the client might want to talk to you. The client might want to get in touch with you and might want to talk about the terms, might want to get to know what type of person you are and might, or might want to talk about more what they're looking for. Maybe it's not so straightforward, so they want to talk to you to give you a better idea of what they're looking for. If this is the case, then by all means, if the client wants to talk to you, no matter how many times they want to talk to you, the more the better. And the reason for this is every time the client talks to you, especially over the phone, it gives you a chance to get to know the job better and therefore to also possibly charge a bit more. And how does this work? Obviously this depends from client to client, from job to job, et cetera. But if you can get them on the phone, then you get a better idea of what they're looking for for this specific project that they're working on. And having a better idea, you can also then say, well, if you're doing this in order to say file taxes in another country, then I can make sure that all my translation is uh, has a right tax terminology and is compliant for tax purposes. Uh, you know, this is a certain type of localization thing that I offer. It does cost a bit more, but if you want me to do that, I can do that. And you give them a price and tell them. Worst case, they'll say, no, no, let's just stick to the original translation. We'll take care of all that, which fine. But if you get to know what they need more and more, then you do have the chance of adding on a little bit more. Obviously, you can't just charge more just for charging, but you can charge more in order to personalize, to customize your service according to their needs more. And just keep this in mind. Every time you have a Skype call or a phone call or something along those lines with a client, then it's your opportunity to get to know more and therefore to charge more because you can offer a better service to them. Also keep in mind that the more they talk to you, whether it be over the phone or Skype or anything, the more sunk costs they have. Now, in case you're not familiar with sunk costs, sunk costs are costs that you've already incurred. These are costs that you've already, the money you've already spent, let's say, and you cannot get it back. And this is exactly what happened to the client when talking to you. Maybe it didn't cost them anything to Skype you, but they did spend time. And time is definitely a non-renewable commodity. So if they have spent a lot of time talking to you, they do have these sunk costs, which means they have more vested in you. And the more time they spend talking to you, the more times they talk to you, the more likely you are to be hired for the job. 
So keep this in mind that the more a client talks to you, the more and more serious they get about hiring you. And that's always a good sign. And so you can use that to your advantage. I'm not saying to take advantage of the client, but to use it to your advantage because you can then customize your service according to their needs because you get to understand it better and you get to see that they are vested in you and that they feel more and more that you're part of the team, that they got to know you better. So anyway, something to keep in mind. Once again, try to keep all your communication short, but always be open for communication from the client. That's why you put up every single form of contact you can for them to contact you, make it as easy as possible for them to contact you, because if they want to initiate this conversation with you, then that's a very good sign and you wanna keep that going. So anyway, that's it. I hope you find this helpful. If you do, please click like, and don't forget to subscribe and you'll get more videos about freelancing, freelance translation, and that hopefully you can find useful in the future. Also, if you click on the, uh, the little bell next to the subscription, uh, next to subscribe, once you subscribe, there's a little bell there. If you click on that, then you'll get notified every time there's a new video so that you don't have to check to see if there's a new video because I know sometimes I can be irregular about posting my videos. So anyway, that's pretty much all for now though. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.